Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I do appreciate it. Hope you're doing really well. Hope you're having a wonderful holiday season. I actually intended to not make any videos this week, and um, I just started playing around in Luminar 4, had a lot of fun with a photo, and said, you know what, maybe I'll make a video about that. It's kind of fun. I love making videos, if you can't tell. Uh, and I thought it might be, you know, helpful to people, perhaps, uh, maybe inspirational, I don't know. Uh, maybe provide some tips and tricks that I thought you could use on some of your photos. So I thought, you know what, Let's make a video. So here I am. Um, here's my photo I took in London. All I did is took the highlights down considerably and bumped up AI accent to 100 because that was the base photo. And there it is now. I just wanted to even out the light. And yes, I am aware there's a lot of spots I had on my sensor. Um, this is a really old photo from like eight years ago taken with my first Nikon DSLR. I love the photo. I need to clean up the spots. I'm aware of that. So um, if you see them and they're annoying you, they're annoying me too. But anyway, here we go. That's the photo. Uh, what I wanted to do, I started getting creative um, and I just did some fun stuff with selective color, which means a monochrome conversion, uh, a texture overlay, which was basically a snowflake, uh, lots of stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a new layer. I'm gonna say plus new adjustment layer. And I'm gonna get over here and start having fun. Uh, the first thing I'm doing is a black and white conversion. So just click that and of course it converts it to black and white. Now if you want selective color, you might think, hey, I'll take the saturation, and what I wanted, uh, if you look at the original photo, uh, the clock face there, I want that to be in color. I want the rest of the photo to be monochrome or black and white. So you might think, well, that's kind of yellow-orange, so let's take the yellow and just increase the saturation. Okay, and it looks like I need to do the red too, and there it is, but all this other stuff comes back as well. So then you might think, well, I should go in here and get the brush, and I'll get erase, and I'll just erase that from here. But you notice you can't erase that color because all you're doing is, you're not erasing just the color that you added back, you're erasing the black and white conversion filter in its entirety. So if you come over here, you're removing all the black and white, which means you can't just bump the colors up in the black and white filter to bring back that one color if it's in multiple areas in the photo and then erase, it doesn't work like that. So here's the trick, let me hit reset, and there's my photo, I'm gonna say convert to black and white. Now instead of messing with saturation, I am gonna go get the mask and I'm gonna say brush, and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, and then I'm gonna make sure I have the eraser, which I do, and then I'm just gonna erase the black and white filter from here. The difference is, in that first example, I did not um, increase the saturation or bring back that saturation uh, or the color you know with the saturation slider all I did and I kind of messed that up so I'm gonna paint a little bit more of this black and white back in um, all I'm doing here I don't really know if I got that but you got the idea all I'm doing here is basically just removing the black and white conversion from the clock face because that color is underneath I don't need the saturation slider to pull it back, it's already there, it's just hidden by a layer, if you will, of black and white. So I'm just deleting that black and white, and there's my color. Now that I have the color back, I can go into this color slider, go into advanced settings, which is HSL, and I'm gonna get the orange, I'm just gonna pull that saturation up a bit to pop that color a little more, and I'm gonna do the same with yellow, and just drag that saturation, and all I'm doing is saturating the yellow and orange, which is the colors that it sees in the image and the only place that color shows up in the image is in the clock face because that's where it's showing. Everything else I've made black and white. Hope that helps. I may do a deeper dive video around um, monochrome to uh, selective color conversion, but that's where I am. Uh, so now I'm gonna go back to AI Enhance on this layer. I'm gonna bump that up a bit, say like 50 something. I'm gonna take Sky Enhancer and do that in the 40s, and I'm just trying to create some mood and drama here. I'm next gonna get AI Structure and pull that up a fair amount as well. So something like 50. I'm gonna get Details Enhancer and pull a few small details and a little bit of medium details just to get a little bit more crispy, crunchy happiness on the, uh, on the clock tower there and some of the other structures which I think is looking just fine now. Now I'm gonna pop over to Pro and I'm gonna get Advanced Contrast and I'm gonna pull up the Highlights Contrast somewhere like around 50 or so and mid-tones contrast maybe in the 40s. So here it is before that filter and after. Not a massive difference, but a little bit more contrast, which I like. 
And then I'm gonna go down to split toning, and this is something I'll often do in my monochromes, which is I'll take uh, the hue over to about 225 or so, something about like that, and then I'll drag the saturation a little ways over, and I'm doing the same thing in the shadows. So about 225 or so, and saturation, you know, something about like that. And all I'm trying to do is create this silvery gray kind of what I like to call a moonlit or moonlight kind of look. I don't know if that's really the color moonlight, I just think of it that way. I think I'll add a little bit more color here and then maybe do a little bit of balance shift. I'm just kind of massaging a little bit, but I like the way it looks. It's basically a monochrome conversion with that silvery moonlight look and a uh, selective color applied just so that the clock face is uh, pretty much standing out in the photo. Okay, now here's the fun part. Now I'm gonna go get a new layer and this is gonna be a new image layer. And I've got this snowflake overlay photo. I'm gonna go ahead and lay that layer on top and give that a second to pop in there. There we go. And now I'm gonna change the blend mode to screen. And there you go, the screen mode works really well on that photo when it's dark in the background and you get the snow uh, coming down. And that was just a free snow overlay that I found on the web um, a long time ago. I've had it for a long time, but if you use the screen blend mode, it works great there. Um, and then you've got the option to come in here and do further enhancements to the photo. Now I need to go get the eraser. So let me do that real quick. I'm gonna click on that, get erase, and I'm gonna go through and pull out some of these spots because they're kind of driving me nuts. Okay, I did that. I didn't wanna bore you by showing you uh, the erase. If you wanna learn about the erase tool, you can check out my video there. And I've got one more thing I wanna do, which is a new adjustment layer. And I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna add a little bit of smart contrast something about like, you know, 35 or 40. There you go, something about like that, just to kind of up the mood a little bit. And that's really my finished photo. Actually, that's not true. I'm gonna add a little AI structure and I'm gonna pull that negative a little bit just because I like to smooth things out. But that was really the photo and the edit. I just wanted to walk through that. I thought it was a lot of fun creating a monochrome with that silvery moonlight look, a selective color, and then a sky overlay, excuse me, a texture overlay, which happened to be snowfall falling and using the screen blend mode to let it pop in there. And I think I've got a much improved photo. Here's the original and here's the final. Just a fun wintry kind of Christmas thing to do. That's how it works, my friends. Hope that helps. Again, hope you have a wonderful holiday. I'll see you really soon. Have a great time uh, with your family and friends over the holiday. And I'll be back with more videos. Thanks again for watching. I appreciate it. Have a great day. Take care and adios.